I happily ripped out my existing StoreKit 2 code that handled my subscriptions in CreatorView and replaced it with RevenueCat. Why did I do that? It will undoubtedly make CreatorView a better business. There's so many benefits to RevenueCat, both on the developer side and from the sales and marketing side. Like, it was a no-brainer. Well, if it was such a no-brainer, Sean, why didn't you do it from the start? It's because I was uneducated, to put it bluntly. And hopefully after this video, you won't be uneducated and you won't be sleeping on RevenueCat like I was. Here was my old, uneducated thoughts on RevenueCat. I thought the only benefit was that it curated your subscriptions from Android, web, iOS, all into one single backend so you could see all your revenue and all in the same charts and all in the same dashboard. And that is a great service if you have, you know, Android app, iOS app, web app. You don't have to manage the finances on all of them. You can see it all in one dashboard. Great value. However, Creator View is only on iOS. So I was like, well, I'm not really going to get any value from RevenueCat, so I didn't use it. Oh, how naive I was. I had heard of RevenueCat through the iOS developer community and other developers always speaking very highly of it, like David Smith of WidgetSmith and that app's meteoric rise when iOS 14 first came out. But I never really dug into it, and it took RevenueCat reaching out about an opportunity for a paid partnership on the series for me to really take a deeper look. And wow, am I glad I did, and I'm kind of ashamed that it took me this long, to be quite honest. Like I said, I've been sleeping on RevenueCat. And that's why I'm excited about this partnership because it's a great product that I'm genuinely enthused about using and I get to share it with you all. All right, there's two main reasons why I made the switch. One of them is from a developer's perspective and another is from the sales and marketing perspective. Let's start with the developer's perspective. That is that RevenueCat is battle tested. If you've ever done it, you know that implementing in-app purchases is a major pain in iOS apps at least. I mean, I've been an iOS developer for over seven years now, and I'm not gonna lie, I fumbled my way through StoreKit 2 in implementing subscriptions in CreatorView. It was a whole week of watching WWDC videos, digging through sample code, maybe a little copy and pasting of that sample code, not gonna lie, but yeah, I got it working after a bit, but here's the thing, am I confident that I covered all of the edge cases, that that code is going to stand up to any scale or any heavy use? Like, Hell no, I'm a little nervous about that code if I'm being honest. So that's why CreatorView will benefit greatly from switching to RevenueCat and all of their experience. Because like I said, they're battle tested. They have thousands of apps using their SDK. They manage over 1.5 billion in annual revenue. Like they've seen it all. All these edge cases you see on the screen right now, they've seen and they've handled. So instead of me taking the time to gain all that knowledge and gain all that experience and build all that piping, all that plumbing of the code to cover all that stuff. It just makes so much sense to outsource that to RevenueCat. It's such a heavy lift, especially if you're an indie dev or a startup. Like, you know, your developer resources, that's your most precious commodity, your developer time. You have to spend that time wisely. So outsourcing the subscription stuff to RevenueCat makes so much sense. And not to mention, like, whose code are you going to trust? Are you going to trust the company whose sole reason for existence is to be experts in the uh, app subscription field? Or you, the developer who watched some videos, read some blog posts, read some documentation, and trying to figure it out? I don't know. It was an easy choice for me. And you developers out there, if you want a little extra peace of mind, aside from their expertise, the SDK is open source. So you can go in there, look at all the code. If you have a special need, you can fork it and change it yourself. That is much better than putting a, a closed source SDK, which is like this black box that you don't know what's going on. So again, a little extra peace of mind for you developers out there. The other reason, and for me personally, probably the biggest selling point was all of the charts and data visualizations you get with Revenue Cat. Now, if you've been following the series, you know Creator View is very heavily on charts and data visualizations. In fact, that's the value prop, right? Provide the YouTuber with all their data visualized in a nice, insightful way so they can make better business decisions. And that's exactly what RevenueCat does, except for your app and subscription business. So let's take a look at some of these charts that you get with RevenueCat. Well, here's just the overview, kind of like a dashboard screen. You can see some basic stats at the top, like active subscriptions, monthly recurring revenue, revenue, and then there's a timeline of like your recent transactions uh, that go through. But that's the overview. Let's dive into some specific charts because this is where uh, this work is awesome, to be honest with you. So on the left here, you see a bunch of uh, various charts that you can dive in. And the cool thing about each chart is you see filter here. You can add a filter that chops it up in all kinds of different ways. We're gonna play with this more specifically in a bit. I'm just kind of showing you that. You can also segment the data by like store, right? This will break it down into App Store versus Google Play Store. Now I won't dive into this too much. I wanna showcase some of the different types of charts and then we'll dive into the revenue chart and I'll show you how you can slice and dice it and some of the information 
you can get out of this. Let's get rid of this segment here, clear the segments. And obviously you can see you can go like daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, last 90 days, year, custom date range. Again, you can just slice and dice your data so many cool ways. Churn. As you know, with the subscription service, right? People cancel, people don't renew. So here you can see your churn percentages like over time, right? You can see how many active subscriptions you have, how many you lost for that day, month. Again, you can chop it up how you like. So MRR movement, we'll take a look at this one bar here just to show the example. Like you can look at the green number. Look, $142,800, that's new revenue. Great, new stuff. But you're not seeing the whole picture if you don't look at who canceled. How much MRR did you lose that month? Again, from people canceling, not renewing. And that's what the blue number is, right? So cool, we gained 142 grand, but we also lost 73. The movement was, you know, 69,000. So this is a cool chart to see the whole picture of, you know, your new revenue, but minus the, the ones you're losing. The last chart example before we really dive into revenue I wanna show is subscription retention. And I'm actually gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see uh, the whole chart. But this makes more sense on a yearly scale too, that you'll see, so we'll go to last 12 months. Now what this is, and this chart's really cool down here, is this is your, your cohorts. In this example, each cohort is a month. So say you got 1,000 subscriptions in July. Well, how many of those people that signed up in July are still here in August? And in this case, we, we started with 17,000 and then now we're at 12,000, right? So you see you lost about 5,000 subscribers in that one month. And then it goes month to month. And you can see, this is just like the total. You know, you can see the drop off in your retention as time goes on. And again, you can put, so let's look at the November 2021 cohort. Maybe we ran a Black Friday sale. We wanna see how, how well those users are sticking around. So you can see theirs and you can compare it to your average. So again, it's just another example of, of chopping up your data. But let's really dive into this revenue chart here. We can have some fun with this one. So again, line, let's go to, you know, stacked area. You can see column. Uh, I like stacked column because that also gives us the total. Because if we highlight one of these bars here, you can see, like we talked about, new revenue, 448,000. These are big numbers, by the way, dummy data. So that's like new people joining, and then you can see your renewals. So renewals are more, and then you can see the total revenue, 1.1 combined. But that's just overall. Now let's chop this up a little bit. Like I said, we can start adding these filters here. Let's get rid of this filter. I guess it already had a filter on it. Um, we'll start from scratch here, right? So let's say I only want iOS. I don't want to see my Android stuff. You know, no reason. Uh, so we want the App Store. So that'll just filter out all the Android and web and just give us the iOS. And then you can add another filter here. So we'll go to product and we'll say, I only wanna see my annual, iOS premium annual, right? I don't wanna see my monthly subscriptions. I wanna see the people that paid the full year up front. So again, add that filter onto it. So now you can see we're looking at app store and annual subscriptions and then you get your number. So again, you can slice and dice this data up however you want, really dive in to get the insights to make business decisions or marketing decisions. And then if we clear these filters, we can go over to segments here. So if I go to segment, this is cool stuff too. Let's go to product and you'll see here, this will break it down by the product. And by product, I mean like iOS premium, iOS premium monthly annual Android. So basically we have a, in this dummy data, an iOS monthly and annual and an Android monthly and annual. And then they're color coded and you can see how much, you know, each one makes up of your revenue. Again, you can play with this data till you're blue in the face, which I love. Like again, this is what I hope Creative View grows up to be. Just the ability to slice and dice all this stuff and give you whatever business insight like you're looking for. And the idea is that these insights will help lead to better business decisions or business ideas. There's the classic saying, you can't improve what you can't measure. Well, here you are, you're measuring everything. You can check everything out. So hopefully you get a bunch of ideas to improve it once you see what's going on. I do wanna to touch on customer lists and customer pages, even though they're irrelevant to Creator View. The reason they're irrelevant to Creator View is because you kind of need identifiable data for this, meaning you see the email address, Creator View just uses iCloud. I don't collect an email or anything like that. It's just like you signing into your notes app on iOS. You don't have to sign in every time. It's attached to your iCloud. However, you know, there are apps where you do need an email and a password to sign in, especially those that are cross-platform between Android, iOS, and web. Yeah, email password's the norm. So those type of apps can benefit greatly from these customer lists. So just like the charts, you can put a filter on it. So we'll add a filter and let's say we want, we want to do status, right? So I want to make, I only want to make sure I get active subscriptions. Status is, active and you can see all the different options you can choose. So we'll choose active and then we'll add a filter for, we'll do total spent, say is greater than and we'll do 100. So let's say we were doing something where we wanted to send an appreciation email, a digital gift card to everyone that spent over $100 to us, right? So you can see this is the marketing side of things. Customer page, I'll just click on the first customer, just kind of a random one. The customer page is where you get information about that customer. Now this can really help your customer service because you get all kinds of information about them, right? You get what subscription they're on, the current offering. But here's the cool thing, look at this history, 
right? You get a whole history. The first time they were using the app, when they started their trial, when they converted to the trial, like when did they renew? When did they make a purchase? They were issued a refund. So you get the whole timeline of their history based on this customer page. Now, like I said, these past two things, Irrelevant to creator view, but I'm showing you revenue cat. And if you do have an app that has an email and password, this is awesome to help you do again, marketing, customer service, that sort of stuff. So revenue cat takes away all the headaches of building subscriptions yourself and handling all the edge cases. It provides you these awesome charts that we just went through the customer list, the customer pages. Like what does this cost? Well, as always, it depends. As you can see, they have a couple different pricing models, but the point is they only get paid when you get paid. If your app's not making any money, you're not gonna have to pay them. I'm on the starter plan. I'm only paying Revenue Cat $8 for every $1,000 that I make. This is before the platform cut, whether it's 30% or 15% from Apple. But if you do the math, that's 0.8% of my revenue. Now, what am I getting for that? Well, I'm relieving all the developer headache of building and managing and handling all the edge cases of the subscription code. I'm also getting all the data analytics and charts, and I'm getting some customer support and some integrations like to the Creator View Slack channel, right? You can put a little alert every time someone subscribes. To me, that's well worth the money. J just relieving the developer headache <laughs> is well worth the money. Because not to mention all the initial code, right? Apple and Google are constantly changing their platform and maybe subscriptions change. Well, RevenueCat's gonna be all over that. They're gonna move with the platform changes as well. So like I said, I, I think it's a no brainer. Not even just because it's sponsored. I know it sounds like I'm a shill. I'm genuinely excited about this product. Like I said, I, I can't believe I've been sleeping on this so long. And I really regret not putting it in from the beginning in Creator View. Next, let's talk about my experience implementing the SDK. Cause like I said, I, I fumbled my way through StoreKit 2. It took me a week of watching the WWDC videos and sample code. It took a while to finally get it. RevenueCAD took me about an afternoon. Now to be fair, because I had already fumbled through StoreKit 2, I kind of understood the big picture of subscriptions. So I'm sure that helped a little bit, but I, I gotta say the documentation of RevenueCAD is some of the best I've ever used. Like every step along the way of the process, there's, feels like it's like a full page, not like a little paragraph, like the link to a full page that shows exactly what you need to do for that step with code, with screenshots. Like it was a very smooth experience. But big picture, I mean, of course, you have to set up your project in RevenueCat. You have to do some backend stuff on App Store Connect so RevenueCat knows about the subscriptions coming through. And then after that, it's, it's pretty minimal code, to be honest with you. And the thing I like is that uh, RevenueCat has async versions of all their functions because, like I said, I had already set up StoreKit 2. And StoreKit 2 utilizes Swift concurrency and all the functions in there are async. My code and my error handling was already set up for async functions. So I'm very glad RevenueCat thought of that and I can use those versions and it just kind of slid in nicely. It was very easy to replace. Between all that experience RevenueCat has and app subscriptions, that battle testedness to really ease my mind as a developer, to all the charts I get for the, the sales and marketing perspective to help my business grow, all that for 0.8% of my revenue. Like I said, it's just a no brainer. I know this video is sponsored, but I've been sleeping on Revenue Cat. I'm really ashamed to say it. I'm, I'm glad I'm not sleeping on it anymore. Hopefully you aren't either. Definitely check them out. There's a link in the description and we'll see you in the next video.